Hi, my name is Eon. Initially, this video was supposed to be part of the Building LibreFlip series, but I decided otherwise. This video does have a connection to LibreFlip, but it's also a bit of a sideline, so I decided to treat it as its own independent project. In episode 22, I made an announcement regarding the CNC mill, and you're probably wondering what has happened to this project. Today I want to give you an update regarding the big CNC mill. Right now, this big semi-truck is arriving, and I learned a lot about international logistics while organizing this transport. Now the big CNC is on its last meter to the workshop, and that's quite a glorious moment. So somehow this is some kind of unboxing video, but for a very large box. Right now, we are in front of the Cardos Makerspace. What's Cardos, you may ask? Cardos is an independent non-profit aid organization financed through donations. Cardos provides emergency medical and technical aid in crisis and war regions. They design, build, deploy and operate the facilities themselves to provide first aid or primary medical care. Currently Cardos is on a mission in Bosnia providing medical help to refugees. To be able to design and build these facilities, Cardos is operating a makerspace dedicated to this task. So let's talk about this huge box that is being unloaded right now. Cardos and me struck a deal. They will host the machine and pay for it, while I organize everything around it from having it made in China to loading it in a container, shipping the container to Hamburg, then loading the machine on the truck, and until now where it finally arrives at the Cardos makerspace. I will continue to help install it and teach the people from Cardos how to operate it, so they can make parts for mobile hospitals with it. In exchange, I can cut all the parts for the page-turning open source book scanner LibreFlip on this machine, if it ever comes to the point where I start to make kits of LibreFlip. Please note, you don't need a CNC to make LibreFlip. LibreFlip is optimized to be made with as little tools as possible. The CNC is only necessary if one wants to make more than one quantity of parts, for example for kits. The box is really big, it fits just barely through the door. Now, let's get to the unboxing part of this video. First, we have to remove some plastic foil. The auxiliary components of the machine have to be taken off before we can continue with the unboxing. We are using these fancy crowbars with the red tips, and they are special equipment for first responders, not normal crowbars. This is quite an opportunity for the crew to train the application of such destructive but potentially life-saving tools. Now this machine needs to be moved in its corner. And we have to do this by hand, because the forklift would not be able to move around in this corner. Unfortunately, we only have one pallet truck, but we also have a lot of wooden blocks, some creativity, and one dolly. And we are operating all of these tools well beyond their maximum capacity. The floor is very uneven and we are stuck behind the ledge. We can't push the machine over the ledge. We have to pull it. So we need to exchange the pallet truck and the dolly and put the pallet truck on the right side of the machine. With the wooden blocks we can extend the maximum lifting height of the pallet truck, which was necessary for the final move. Bam! There is the machine! Today, a couple of days later, I had some help that didn't want it to be filmed and I preferred that instead of not having the help. So, sorry for that, you didn't get to see how I adjusted all the feet and um, put the machine down uh, and made it yeah, flat and horizontal, this surface here. Let's go through some of the features. Up here, over here, we have the big spindle. That thing is what drives the cutting bit down here. Over here, this is where the cutting bit goes in. 
This whole unit is the motor that actually drives the mill bit that cuts things. And um, this thing is cooled with water. Water is running through here and pu being pumped through, through it with these tubes. It doesn't have any air cooling, so all the heat that's generated inside this powerful motor is being taken out of the system with these uh, tubes. These other tubes are for lubrication, I figured out. There are these handy pump handles on the sides. This is this one of those pump handles. If I pump it like this, then I distribute oil through the system and then it ends up dripping from here. No, not really. It's, a, it's the block that distributes the oil to all the bearings and um, other parts. Look here, th there goes some oil into this part. So this pretty brilliant, I think. It's like looks, looks like a good and solid construction to me. But there is still a lot of work to do. So the next, next uh, steps are that we need to hook up the dust suction. Look here. This, this end isn't hooked up yet to anything. And over here is the unit that will uh, suck the dust, but it's not hooked up to a power or, uh, and um, no tubes are hooked up yet as well. This working surface is a vacuum table. Through these holes, air is sucked out of the system. And over here are these rubber bands. And I can lift these out, let me show you, like this and form a different shape in the surface, like this, to make a zone where we suck the air out, uh, out from between the part and the vacuum table to just hold the sheet where it belongs, but only in those areas that won't be cut through, so I can limit the, the, um, the vacuum. So this is, this is, up here is where the computer will go. Like here, we need to install a, a screen, and down here, is where the actual PC will go. We already have a cable here, a USB cable, to hook up the, the driver boards. And down here, we have a big uh, transformer that transforms 240 volts to r roughly 90 volts, which uh, controls, uh, which is the power for the stepper drivers. And then we have this unit that uh, controls the spindle that holds the tooling. So there is still a lot of work to do. I, I explained this bit already in episode um, 23, that um, this machine was paid for by Cardos, but I organized it and got the logistics working and uh, I had it custom made in China and shipped here and now we have it here. And it, it will be mainly used by Cardos, but because I organized everything around this machine, I will be able to cut uh, the kits for LibreFlip on this machine if I will ever get to the point of making kits of this project. So that's, that's the background. We will use this machine to cut the kits for the book scanner. And um, I think this machine will pop up in future episodes. I will make at least another episode about um, how we get all the electronics fitted and how we yeah, make the machine run for the first time. Um, so this is coming up. And if you just made your way to the series, this is just one part of a longer series where I show all the steps how to make this page turning book scanner LibreFlip yourself. This episode was about a sideline acquiring a big CNC to actually be able to make kits for this book scanner. I try to publish uh, weekly episodes, but for the last weeks I have been really bad at that. Sorry for this but uh, new episodes come out every Thursday. And if you like to not miss the next episode, then please click the subscribe button. And, I will, and if there is a new episode, it'll come out on a Thursday. See you soon.